I'm at a gypsy. I don't, truthfully, I see the sport having to kill the privateer. I kind of think so too, bro. I had this conversation yesterday, Glenn Helen, where uh, uh, one of the boys from Luxon was saying that, oh, it's such a bummer for the privateers. But then I'm like, does the NBA give a fuck about people playing pickup basketball in New York City? Dude, probably a great fucking basketball player. Don't care. Yeah. Don't care. Doesn't fit the model, bro. Sorry. Like, we, I'm not, the NBA isn't catering their schedule around a dude that works at Home Depot. Sorry. It just fucking is what it is. So, like, yeah, I kind of agree. Well, that's why uh, I get kind of a little bit in trouble as far as the whole riders union and stuff. And, and I think it goes back towards a catalyst for change. And if you think about, like, how you control a, a big portion of a, a population, you do it from the children. You do it from people that are susceptible to influence, influence yeah. right? And potentially with what you and I are doing, talking about some of the things that could potentially be changed. You know, the kid, the guys that are privateers right now, they're going to get banned. They're going to get banned. They're going to get removed. They're going to stop the bleeding and like, hey, we don't need any of this. It's not constructive. But what could happen is like I've stopped talking to the privateers about like, hey, you know, we need to just anyway, it, it's not worth anybody's time. Like it's it's bad. It's tasteless. Like it doesn't need to be there. The sport is doing great. You've got World Supercross who jumped in and is forcing change. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Because the real scenario is like, how do you get involved with somebody that has the resources to make an honest change? Like I can talk about change, but I can't do anything unless I get a hold of somebody. It's not a matter of how, it's a matter of who, mm. right? And so the privateers won't do it, but the kids coming up that know like, hey, if I need to make a living at this, like it needs to be better and blah, blah, blah. Mm. They might not stand for things that are going on today and therefore they're going to force change as they get older right but what i really see happening if i'm you know foreshadowing is either a stock class being brought up or an f2 class or something that is the that's production what we, that's class. what we actually need yeah I, I think the sport has gone downhill since we had the production rule come in like you know 2000 and whatever that was the heyday for racing dirt bikes yeah. and now it's kind of gone downhill but we have another opportunity now because of the pandemic everybody's got a bike they you know they borrowed money when interest rates were so low they got a little stimulus check in and they didn't realize that they were going to be paying for it the rest of their lives mm -hmm. <laughs> but um there's a lot more people involved in the sport now and so how, how do we capitalize on it is really the the thing yeah 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 no I, I completely agree but i think yeah it's just for us to really really grow like yeah there should be a development series that like anyone can enter and it's like yeah if you got the money you sign up and you can go it's on tv and it's like you know it's a stock class so it's quote unquote fair you know there's like some kind of ruling around that it's on tv or it's on part of it. like live streamed youtube yeah i was I gonna mean. say live stream the moto keep the motos the same but live stream a, a development class to youtube suck people in that maybe don't have peacock or whatever or play it just on peacock exclusive that you know have it as like a combine type of class like why is then that not every weekend you know um but yeah i just i think that the sport can't grow while it's also trying to cater towards you know so like the point yesterday was um oh they haven't even confirmed their rider entry list like that's not good for privateers that have to work and, and it's like you're right that's also that's that's a very fair point also if i'm felled i don't give a fuck yeah <laughs> like i don't because i've got there's stadium entries. dates there's this there's that there's like there's so many factors that go into just getting there to make it happen i don't give a fuck about that person and, and that sucks to say that out loud but it's true you know and it's again the nba doesn't give a fuck about some dude that's awesome at playing basketball that works at home depot that can't find his way into the into the nba schedule right now but could you imagine if all the privateers just didn't show up then because then you have 10 guys yeah so then you'd have to be catering yeah but 
there is such a strong arm on, you know, because truthfully, if I'm being honest, if let's say there was a coup happening and the privateers were all there, well, maybe somebody like me that like doesn't actually make the night show, you know, I'm the 45th guy or something mm-hmm. at a supercross, be like, fuck all you guys. This is my opportunity. Exactly. And so when you have this many privateers, there's going to be guys that show up. Like if we look at the nationals and I was saying this all summer long that like, this is the year of the privateers. Okay. You had a lot of privateers show up and were able to ride, but then the privateer race, you know, between 10th to 30th, that was the most competitive it's been all year. Cause everyone's like all these factory guys are out. Yeah. yeah. So there's so many guys are signing up to try to but go. The, the sport doesn't do a good enough job of explaining that narrative. So like at no point, like I don't know who the best privateer, well, Ty Masterpool, but like, yeah. I don't know who was battling for what each weekend, you know, where it's like in, you go to F1, they've got like the best of the rest. It's like, when a Williams guy gets in the top 10 or when, you know, like there's all of, there's like a scale where it's like, we know these people, we know where they finish. We know what equipment we're on when we know, like it's a race within a race. And that might be what makes privateers less of a privateer. You know, like if I bet your time, Arsenal got a lot more support this year as the season went on. Yeah. Now he's on that, um, H HBI or or team. And and that guy is spending a shit ton of money to go racing. Yeah. But, just the privateers dying and we can totally agree with that and who is forcing the catalyst to that like think about it if you're really thinking about it the futures the compine yeah these aren't enter at your own will type amateur deals on there mm, they're, they're invite, invite only, yeah, yeah, and they they're are. invite from the teams yeah, right yeah, or yeah. these kids already have factory potential contracts with these teams yeah yeah so they're the next up and coming so if you can get that boom it's already done that's your f1 class yeah that's yeah. f2 well i mean that's that's the uh, yeah. that's the then premium we, class yeah, 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 yeah so then who's left yeah. if you couldn't enter it because you didn't get an invite you can't race anymore so like that is where it's going yeah so if anything the privateers need to be asking the questions where do i fit in yeah what what class do we have for us yeah where's the sister series or what We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125, Gypsy Gang.